G'day everyone! Long time no video. So I thought I'd make a video about a very, um, very, very important topic, which is um, oh, um, I oh I forgot what I was going to talk about. Oh, there's flashy lights behind me. The Christmas lights, flash, flash, flash. Oh, oh yeah, I was going to talk about brains because I like brains, brains, wonderful brains, brains. Oh yeah, do you know what? Do you know what else I like? I like ricotta. Ricotta tastes really good with Frankfurt. Frankfurt. And oh, and I learnt about magnocellular neurons are bigger than paravicellular neurons. Magnocellular neurons. <laughs> Guys, show some love for your hyperactive, depressive, nervous, science nerd guys. I'm different, just like everybody else, don't you understand? Now let's actually get on topic, shall we? Neurodiversity. What's neurodiversity, right? Diversity, everybody's different, eyes, eye colour, race, sexuality, religion, blah blah blah. Same thing applies for brains. Imagine this. A hundred billion uh, neurons in your brain and three times as many glia. And then, um, can you imagine two brains being exactly the same? The probability of this happening, as well as the influence environment has on um, the brain connections. I'm not real good at probability, but you can bet there's no such thing as identical brains. If there is, well, hmm, shoot me down. That's pretty der brain stuff about brain, but why is this so important? Uh, it kind of implicates the way we define normality and the way we define disorder. Because if every brain is different, how are you going to figure out what's normal? And then out of that, not only is there a question of normality, but a question of disorder. Disorder indicates usually that something's a disease state or that something's bad. And, but the thing is, people's uh, cognitions and behaviours and mental capacities are all different. Neurodiversity, according to Wikipedia, was a term introduced by a group of autistic individuals who thought that autism itself was not a disorder, not a disease, not a disability, but just a trait that was part of them, something that made them a little bit different from everyone else. Just like how African Americans have different coloured skin to everybody else. Still the same, just different coloured skin. Autistic people, same, just different um, behavioural patterns. It's not a disability and it doesn't need to be cured. Other neurological conditions and illnesses, as they were called, have begun to fall under this category of neurodiversity. ADHD is another good one. Um, dyspraxia, dyslexia, and um, to some extent Tourette syndrome. But then again, there's some clearly out ones, such as Parkinson's disease. That's almost always viewed as a curse and a disorder. ADHD, on the other hand, is often um, quite thought of as a blessing, not a curse. I don't suffer from ADHD nor am I blessed with it. So I can't really talk that much. Well actually I just haven't been diagnosed with it by a professional. A lot of um, friends and teachers have armchair psychologists diagnosed me with it, but anyway it's beside the point. But SPM Films did an excellent talk about it. The link's in my video description and he talks about how ADHD is not a curse but it's a blessing and the wonderful things it's done for him and check that out if you're interested because it's a good alternative view on the subject matter. At the same time, I don't want to undermine um, anyone's suffering. I bet you there's, there's people out there who are suffering with this disorder and they just want to get rid of it. Just like say cancer or diabetes or whatever, it, it, it hurts. And 
And um, what may be one person's blessing is another person's curse. I reckon we could sit around here and debate whether these things are disorders or not. Well, I think it's up to the individual with the gift or curse. If someone's got autism, it's up to them what they want to do about it. They can embrace it and use it and accept it as part of them. Or they can go for treatment, same with ADHD. And it, you know, causes problems in different situations and it presents itself in different ways. It's up to the person really what they decide about them. I can't tell I can't tell someone else how they should feel about it. What I do think needs to happen is a little bit of change in society and accepting of differences. Someone's behaving a little bit weirdly. Alright? You don't need to pick on them. You don't need to bully them. You don't need to call them names. If you think they're weird, just shut up and keep it to yourself. You know, it really can ruin somebody's life if you constantly tease them, call them names, put them down, think they're inferior, discriminate them, don't employ them, whatever. Also, get educated. Ignorance is a huge curse. Look up ADHD on Wikipedia. You know, a lot of people think this is ADHD. You <laughs> me, I'm hyper, I'm hyper. You know, there's a lot more to that than just being a bit hyper. What about all the cre uh, creativity, the multitasking, focusing, quick thinking? We can also sit around and debate about what's a disease and what's not. Some are more controversial than others. Anxiety disorders, depressive disorders, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, epilepsy, the list goes on. What's a disorder and what's not? What's just neurodiversity? What's an illness? What's a curse? What's a blessing? Well, really, I think it's up to the problem. And, and a big thing in um, DSM diagnosis is a criteria is that it, it causes a problem. It causes um, disruption to the function. And if it does, it's a disorder. Things like hypermania, that itself isn't a problem. And it wouldn't be a mental illness if it wasn't part of bipolar and the mania and the depression. My point, if you can't sit still for a minute, I'm, I don't want to force you to go to a psychiatrist and to take medication. But if you want to take medication, if you want to go to a psychiatrist, that's none of my business either. See, I reckon, really, why do we care so much about other people's behaviour if they're not influencing us or if they're not harming themselves? Think about an issue that's old but not done with. Variations in sexuality, most commonly homosexuality. This used to be a diagnosable DSM illness, but they pulled it out because it's not an illness anymore, it's just diversity in sexuality. But it's got the same um, blessing and curse, you know, um, me, say if I liked other girls, so what? Why is it your business? Unless you want to have sex with me and you're a man, and uh, then it's a problem, I can understand, but who would anyway? But, um... It's also a curse because you force discrimination from homophobics and it's more, it would be a social disability and also because it's an atypical sexuality, you know, it's in the minority, uh, we live in a sort of um, heterosexual world so it might be confusing to the individual. There's the blessing and the curse thing happening but really in the end the person is like that, they're different gonna have to deal with it and so society. There's one I see um, getting discriminated against quite often is transgendered people. People just don't understand how someone uh, can be a different gender to their sex. My uni is pretty good. There's a lot of awareness about it, especially in my neuroscience course. When um, gender is a variable, their limitation in their presentation is always, oh, we didn't look at the differences between gender and sex. Everybody knows they're two different things, right? And there's a great guy I met at uni who used to be a girl. Tell people this and their reaction is, 
God, you've got some freaks going to your uni. Wow, I mean, people just don't understand. It's a man, but he has a pussy. Oh! I mean, I don't understand why people care so much. I mean, unless they're, they're sexually attracted to this person and, oh, there there's a rejected thing already. But it's like someone being married or taken or whatever. Why the hell does anybody care? I suppose it's ignorance and confusion. I mean, we live in a very gendered society, especially with the he, she pronouns. I mean, you kind of got to know someone's gender, and if you don't, you, I don't know, people might kind of get intimidated and whatnot. And also the fact that they're, they're vastly different and they're in a minority group, and they don't know much about it. Anyway, that's my hypothesis about discrimination. I don't know what's yours. But really, I think it needs to stop because it's making people's lives miserable. But one major issue with neuro neurodiversity is sort of life-changing um, decisions that one person makes for another. One example, a mother does a genetics test and finds her unborn baby has um, the autism. Does she get an abortion because the baby's autistic or not? Is it an illness? Or maybe the mother goes, yes, autism, fantastic, I score. I also watched a fantastic video at uni on the issue, but looking at deafness as a culture. And a bunch of people were saying cochlear implants and curing deafness is, a, is genocide, basically, they were saying, because it's getting rid of a culture, you know, there's the, um, the Auslan or the, the sign language that they have and sort of a community that they're a part of and making them hear again is sort of destroying that. And the problem with that is parents making a decision on whether or not to get a cochlear implant for their kids or not. For themselves, it's alright, but making a decision for your kids, there's the problem. Not only that, but um, campaigning against scientists to stop trying to find cures for all sorts of neurodiversity type things. How would people f uh, feel if we wanted to find a cure for um, homosexuality? What about for ADHD, for autism? Whatever. It's up to the person again. I think um, cures should be researched, but with caution. People understanding neurodiversity. It's not a scientific term, it's not in Medline or anything. Cure, or whatever you want to call it, should be there if people want it. I don't think it's genocide at all. People want a problem fixed, they fix it. You know, why do, pe why do you think people have cosmetic surgery? What about behavioural surgery? I guess it's going a bit far in comparing two different things, but you know what I mean. It's up to the person, how they handle themselves. And a lot of these things don't influence sort of your decision making. Where this will be a problem is um, mania, for example. You can't really think. Same with schizophrenia. But uh, someone with ADHD is capable of thinking for themselves. Tourette's as well, you know, they can, they can make up their mind if they want to fix, fix it or not. Anyway, thank you for listening. Um, I think it's a really important topic and you know, I'm passionate about my neurons, so I guess I like to talk a lot about these things. And um, also I've got some uh, links up if you want to read, if you're interested in this topic yourselves and about the debate. Read about it for yourselves and make up your own minds. Until then, catch you later.